Castaway 2000 is a unique experiment to discover what happens when a group representing British society today is stranded away from modern life. On the deserted Scottish island of Taransay, they'll have a year to decide how to run the community, devise new ways of living together, and reflect on what aspects of life are really important in the 21st century. 4,000 people apply to take part. Competition for the 36 places is fierce. Do you want to help or do you not want to help? Well, I'm surprised I'm still here, really. Last week, the first 23 were selected for a combination of their compassion, strong leadership, oh, look at the worm. and even stronger stomachs. The challenge now is to complete the group with complementary characters and skills. The second selection course has eight children, aged three to 11, and 20 adults. They have just four days to prove to our expert advisors which of them are worthy of the last nine adult places. I'm currently a lady of leisure, having been made redundant a month ago. Yes. What's your name? Oh, my. Oh. I'm a dinner lady. I come from a little village called Christmas Pie. 34, single. We're married, dear. Oh, yes, we're married, yes. <laughs> when I've studied indigenous tribes in the past, it's like the Anamami tribe in, in the Amazon. My father was a farmer, and uh, I've never really quite, quite escaped from the shadow of the nobility of manual labour. I'm also a trampolinist, or I used to be a trampolinist. Gareth's good at, I was going to say, killing things. You forgot to give your age. Oh, yes, that's it. Go on, then. 52 in November. I'll do anything. I'll do absolutely anything I'm asked to do. The most wonderful thing that I could experience is actually to have a baby over there. The Lake District is the location where the volunteers must fight to be selected. Well done, OK. All right, folks. During grueling practical challenges, SAS survival expert Lofty Wiseman hopes to discover both physical strength and mental stamina. And there's a big danger. You've got a year to run on the island. Um, if you don't pace yourself or know what's coming or be prepared to sort of slog it out, I, I think you might have a problem there, you know. As they're introduced to some of the tasks they'll have to deal with on the island, psychologist Cynthia McVeigh will be analysing them, even when they think they're not being watched. How people get on together is really very important. We don't want lots and lots of aggressive personality types. We need some of the quieter, gentler, more caring type of people. It's the start of the selection course. They've been given limited rations, but haven't been told what to expect or how to organise themselves. They quickly realise that their first task is to grab a tent. <laughs> it's a bit um, smaller than I, than, I, than I thought it would be, but it'll do. All have different reasons for wanting to become castaways and talents they feel they have to offer. It's going to be longer I don't know if there's going to be room in there for four of us. Every group of people needs an optimist. Um, I'm, I'm cheerful in the face of all odds, um, or at least I have been so far. Looks like we're left with one of the worst, I think. We've been together 12 years, haven't we? Mm -hmm. um, Patrick's brought five children up. I've brought five children up, so we're 10 between us. And they're all adult now, we've got grandchildren. And we've done a reasonable job, haven't we, on them? They're all yeah. brilliant. They're, a good job. they're brilliant yeah. kids, they are. Mm -hmm. And we decided it's about time we did something for us. I'm personally bankrupted and um, I've got another 12, 14 months to go and no matter what way you turn, you can't have a bank account, you can't earn this much money, you can't do this, you can't do that. It's, it's basically a prison sentence for that going to the Nick. The opportunity of going off on some island somewhere, digging holes and building things and help constructing a an environment and a kind of area which I'd like to be part of and create is quite uh, interesting. The volunteers are divided into three teams. Their first competitive challenge is to build a machine to catapult an egg. This is a Scouse rocket. It's based on a Roman catapult idea. We knew triangles had to be involved somewhere because it's the strongest way. It's only been tested once and the first time it worked. And then the second time we just did it without anything and it looked like it didn't work. <laughs> With limited rations, an added incentive is that they can eat any of the eggs they catch. 
those that can take failure quite well, those that can say, well, I didn't do it very well, but I'm prepared to try again, are people of the type you would actually like to see on the island because there will be a lot of failure. Yeah. Whoa, no, ah! Those who are offered the opportunity to go to the island will have to use their ingenuity to cope with the harsh conditions. Winds can gust up to 140 miles an hour, producing wind chill temperatures as low as minus 15 degrees. Accommodation will be limited. Three existing buildings are being renovated as shared living spaces, and building work is about to start on four sleeping units. These will use the latest in alternative technology and design, but will be basic and shared. To make life slightly more comfortable, the castaways will, however, be allowed to choose one luxury item to take with them. Um, a dog. Of course. My guitar. A guitar. Harmonica. A fishing rod. An entire rig for stilling whiskey. I don't really have luxuries. A Walkman. My waist belt to carry tools in. My duvet. Concertina. Maybe the old Rolly. Or Super Nintendo. The old pint. Pairs of tights. I just remembered one. Moisturiser. Before evening, the volunteers face their first survival test, fire making, and there's a variety of approaches. I think a big fire would be nice because everyone would get together. It's going to serve about four tents. Right. So it's a neighbourhood fire. It's a neighbourhood fire. <laughs> we want to go for three singular fires, you know, so we can just cook it. I just thought we'd just have one big fire and all share, but I suppose, I don't know. See what happens. <laughs> I think it's easier to cook on three fires than like just to cook on one big That's fire. Right, of Besides, we've got individual rations anyway between the, the green and the reds and the, and the yellows. Push came to shove, and you have to decide between this, whether this was a neighborhood fire or a yellow team fire. Whose fire would it be? Depends how many are in the neighborhood. <laughs> and anyone can use it, it's not we've a problem. selfish. Often. I'm just building a fire that's going to support some people. Yes. Hello? Hello? Come over here a minute. We've got a, we've got a problem with the fires, OK? Either we have a joint fire in the middle. If we don't, then we'll have four independent fires around the wall. I want your vote on one or two. All for one, put their hands up. Not in the middle. All for two. One at the edge. OK. So now we've got to work out where we're going to put the main fire. I don't suggest we put it in the middle. Clearly, if you've got 20 adults, it's going to be extremely difficult to get some sort of consensus. What you actually have to do is start organising voting systems and trying to decide whether you're going to go with a majority vote or whether it's got to be unanimous. Two or three. Two or three. 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 Yeah. Three because yeah. You'll... Because There's only about four people for two or three fires, yeah, see? Yeah, so the one fire is leading, for starters, so you've got <laughs> to look around. Well, I'm, not gonna, you're I'm not going to ask but around asking really for a vote again. Who, who wants one big fire in the middle? Put yeah, their hands not up. In the, not in the middle. Not in the middle. Okay. Yeah. okay. Not in the middle. Who wants one big fire at the edge? At the edge. Okay. Right. It wins then. All right. We've got a debate now as to where it goes. <laughs> I will suggest. Yes. And that's it. I'm not going to kind of um, say, oh, you know, because this is done before, this is how it's got to be, and I suggest everyone joins me. I'll say, well, the problem of having a fire in the middle is it can't be managed. It's it's very difficult to keep going. It's very difficult to to cook with. Very difficult to maintain. Four separate fires is more difficult to kind of maintain also because you've got four of them going, yeah. but then they're easy to cook with, easy to maintain, easy to keep going, but then it doesn't make a group bonding. So, yeah, but I was just surprised that none of these points were discussed before that decision was taken. Well, we failed our first political test then, haven't we? <laughs> you haven't often got enough time for 20 people to say individually what, what each person wants and what each person expects to to contribute to whatever the task is. That means that very often people might come to a decision and when they really think about it afterwards, it's not what they want, and so they just go off and do their own thing. We might be changing things anyway. Oh, yeah? The discussion over right. here is now that it might be a bit difficult for all of us to cook on, on just the one fire. Yeah, that's So just cool. to do a fire for the fire. reds, a fire for the greens, yeah. a fire for the yellows, and just get on with it. It brings up a very good uh, point of the exercise, which is, on the island, we're going to have lots of disagreements and lots of agreements and lots of debates as to how to get to a common you know, conclusion or result. But I had everything that money could buy. Nice Saab 9000, nice house, nice garden, lovely wife. And I lost it all. Ended up in a homeless hospital, divorced, bankrupted. And I was just destroyed, absolutely, well and truly. 
finished. And then I got the new job, doubled my pay overnight, but it's not what I want to do. Now it's time for Robert Hicks to grow up and give stuff back to people rather than just thinking the world's a commercial venture. Having made a decision of sorts about the fires, they can start cooking once they've caught their food. This pond is absolutely stacked with fish and they're waiting to leap onto your hooks or nets or whatever, OK? Now, my boot laces, this is nylon core, at least a metre long. Take a large rock, something nice and heavy, tie one end onto the rock, tie it nice and tight so it don't come off. That's going to be thrown in the water, have all your lines coming off, and on the hook, a worm. If there's fish in that water, I guarantee on a worm, the surface, the ground feeders like eels, they take it, the mid feeders and surface feeders, including aquatic like ducks, swans, anything, they'll see that hook just underwater and we can get the seabirds as well. Is that a no no? I think we got the wrong bait. I could do another couple of them, Mike. Oh, there's no fish in there. Because I'm starving. I'm really hungry. And it's not, it's not very nice to go home, really. I'm beginning to have a headache, actually, that's why. Well. Yeah, a bit of crap, so After an hour, Lofty's not impressed. Oh, God. Keep it as simple as you can, you know. Rock, string, every metre, say three, four rocks on each line. And that way, you know, you can manage that. The moment you start going um, more hooks, they, they tangle up and uh, lost a lot of time. You know, as soon as you get them hooks in the water, you stand a chance of getting a fish. When they're out here, you've you got no chance. You're not going to fly out that water, you know. My team started doing it, and what they were doing is they were putting the hooks on, then trying to put the uh, twine on the line, and then wondering why everything was getting tangled up and everything was a mess. Um, and I just stood back for a while, um, had a cigarette, decided that everyone was really stupid, um, waited for it all to go wrong, and then thought, OK, now let's suggest something that might work. Um, it's, it's, like the, it's like the fire incident down at the bottom there. It's just mad. Too many people want to have the say, and they don't always know what they're doing. So. Where's your you got that half a worm? They're on the top of the boat there. I'm starting to lose it slightly with my team. <laughs> I think everyone's had problems in their lives. I mean, one of the common themes from this weekend is that a lot of people have had problems, and it's those problems that make them think, bang, I want to change, it doesn't matter, I'm, I'm able to change, um, and not, not to take the status quo too seriously. Um, and I mean, personally, I've had problems, um, losing jobs, uh, redundancy, homelessness, various things at different times which, which, which cause problems. But at the moment, my life's quite content. I'm not, I'm not trying to escape from anything at the moment that's, that's too bad, that's too negative. It's just the general what's going on. I get really frustrated with commercialism and consumerism, which is partly the reason why, part of my motivation for wanting to escape from it. At the end of the day, I think the island's just such a, just such an opportunity. It's just such a unique thing. Some people have probably got more experience than others, and I think it just takes a bit of time for that to come through, mm -hmm. and for people to realise who has strengths in various areas and who has weaknesses in various areas. And it's also probably a little bit of lack of assertiveness. Nobody's being prepared to just sort of cause a stir, say what they really think, but it'll come. So you're happy to be the leader for the time being? Um, as long as I don't have the responsibility. <laughs> I think that people sometimes sit back under pressure because they're, f they're afraid of failure. Maybe they don't have exactly the type of confidence that's required to, to have a go. And you might get a bit of sitting back in this group under pressure because they're a wee bit fearful of letting themselves down. Lofty's also taught them how to make a net. He's not impressed with that either. I don't know how to make a tennis racket with that. It's sort of very short. It's a very short net. <laughs> See the top string lock? That will hold the Queen Mary. What they should have done, unbraided it all, then they'll have all, all the stuff then to make a complete net. Even that net in the water stands a chance of catching a fish. A drunken fish or a stupid fish won't come along, you know. So get it in the water, you know. There we go. So just keep your eye on that little piece of wood. With any luck, it'll start bobbing. Well, with a lot of luck. In fact, with more luck than we're likely to get. Luck is also running out on the island. Building work on the sleeping accommodation is supposed to have started. With 12 weeks to go before the first castaways arrive, there's no let-up in the bad weather. 
leaving the builders and their materials marooned across the water on Harris. I think we're going to have some of the accommodation. My feeling is we're not going to get all of it. Um, we're fortunate to have some existing buildings out there that give us a starting point. Um, let's see what happens. We're trying to foreshorten every process to get the majority of the accommodation finished. Um, the weather will be the major factor in it. The bottom line, though, is that we have enough roof cover there for 35 people to bed down sleeping bags if necessary. Um, and then that'll be a good incentive for them to get on with the building, hopefully. <laughs> Back in the Lake District, they're getting used to roughing it. Their final test is to choose the materials to build a raft and haul them around an assault course against the clock. OK, I'm going to give you five minutes, OK, to discuss what you need to build a raft. All the barrels. All the barrels, OK. Four paddles. Four paddles. Go to the planks. Go uh, to the planks. And all of the spars, I suppose. Four barrels, two paddles. Four bits of wood. You can use what's, that as lashing. What's use the best wood? The planks or the, or, the, or, the, or the stakes? Well, we need... We need to this is their main chance to show our selection team who's really up to being chosen for the last nine places on the island. OK, go! There is one important rule. The bucket must never touch the ground. If it does, the team has to go back to the start of the obstacle. For Julie, the assault course is something of a departure from city life. <laughs> so far, I've been playing the London game. I was an estate agent for a while. I taught for three years. Um, I worked for the relocation company for a couple of years. Um, then a cinema for about a year. Then the stockbrokers. And stop! Stop the world! I want to get off! Can we trap it? And receive this. Julie, you gotta you gotta receive this. You gotta help us across. Yeah, so on your back and your arms in the air. Yeah, I mean, it's all the same. And there's no shower. Oh for heaven's sake. I was surprised actually how, how little I minded the redundancy thing because I was worried that instead of being, you know, working for stockbrokers, being a, a trade desk coordinator or whatever, that actually having to go, well, I'm not working at the moment would be what would be troublesome because a lot of people define themselves by their job. I am a this, I am a that. Um, but in fact, it hasn't been too bad. Well done, Julie. Excellent. Over. Over the top. Is that Max Factory good on the edge of you? Dior, darling, Dior. Dior, well done. I want to do something completely different now. I want to get out and be able to feel the wind and all those romantic little ideals. <laughs> We have 14 minutes. Thank you. Despite the mud, time. Julie and the red team reach the halfway now. point at a cracking pace. Excellent. Clearly, Julie, who's normally the glamorous figure, she's actually throwing herself into this wholeheartedly. She's also doing it with great good humour, and that's definitely an asset. You've had 16 minutes. I can't see much steam yet, but she'll be steaming by now. OK, keep it going. Well done. Julie, I don't know if anything might get her down in the end, but um, she's handling it at the moment. You know, she's seen it as a big fun in that. I think if she went into a salt, it'd be a deep one. But I'm only surmising, you know. But uh, no, what she's done so far, very credible, you know. <laughs> I love her accent. You wait till we drink right away. Dude. Yeah, she's very willing. She plays up the camera a bit, but I think you need that as well. But deep down, like she's doing it. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Three more barrels. For Patricia, being selected would mean an opportunity to re-examine her life. I just always just seem to leave a relationship with folk that are dead jealous and possessive. I'm a really, really hard worker, right? And I always put 110% in. But whoever I leave behind always ends up 110% better off. Just roll, just roll down the net. The more I give, the more people take, sort of thing. <laughs> so I'm hoping that by going on the island that um, it'll boost my confidence. You know, to the fact to make me feel useful. Well done, Rick one. Come in, come in. Come in, come in, come in. At the finish, the Reds are round in a blistering 23 minutes. <laughs> Go! Next up, the Yellows. Man Mountain, Robert Hicks, nominates himself to carry the bucket single-handed. But is this wise? Come on, we should be sweating by now. Let's go. Let's move it. Talk to each other. Encourage. Three minutes gone. Move it. Okay, I'll go. When can I get off here? You can come off now. Come on, listen. Keep it going. Let's get the gear down here now. Over to the start of the tyres. Where do we go now? Over to the start of the tyres. I'm only saying it once. I'm not saying it again. If you just slow back and think, okay, um, take advice, you know, and uh, he's not very really fit, and he is a big lad, and uh, I'd hate to feed him quite honestly, you know what I mean? 
a bit like keeping horse, but uh, um, he has got a lot of limitations, you know. Stay there, I'm going on. But he has contributed. I can't take that away from him. Our two experts are forming different views on his abilities. You've had six minutes. He's a very big man and he has an immense amount of body to carry around the assault course. Sorry, I'll do it I'm going to grip. You can see that he's getting tired. You can see he's struggling. Encourage each other. Talk to each other. Come on, make a plan. If you jump in there, you have to go back again. You've got to clear the obstacle. You're wasting time either go back, get out of the way, or keep it moving. Come on. Let's go, let's go. Jump, jump, jump. Well done, easy. Come on, keep it going. Well, he might have frozen, he might have hesitated, but he hasn't given up. So he's clearly challenged by some of the things he's having to do. He's actually getting round it. Okay, keep it going. He burned himself out. He had that big tub of ropes, he had all the logs. That's lovely. Well done. And then halfway round, he got knackered. He was a liability because he tried to take too much on. Okay, your problem is the bucket. Oh, hang on, you touched. All back. Come on, it's just the floor lock. Okay, now listen in. Work as a team. That's the last warning. Let's go to go on the top. Someone's got to get on their back. Big Robert, he's, he's got loads and loads to say, loads and loads of things, but uh, and he does things and um, he doesn't really listen uh, and he, he jumps in again like, you know, he's got a little bit of knowledge and he, he's trying to impress, you know. I'll go in front, I'll go in front. <laughs> I don't think he's used to this sort of life. Keep it up, keep it up. I think that's his problem. He won't adjust to the circumstances or conditions, you know. Over there, yeah? Peter, he jumps in like crash bang bollock. He's not got no tolerance for other people. Now, if he only stood back and thought, what should we do, lads, and thought about it, it'd be a better um, 11 more to offer. He does work, but a lot of work would be, um, if, he's, if he's misguided or goes off the wrong tangent, you've got to do it all again. It might be, and everyone tends to follow a dynamic character, and you might go too far before you realise you're going the wrong way, you know? This is not something I have to do, it's something I want to do. I was homeless over two years, from the 16 to 18, and I wasn't a homeless beggar that sat there with a sign saying, help me, give me some money, and then go back to a flat. I was homeless and confused. I was unemployed for six years. I was a shoplifter for eight years. That's not on the ground. Some rope. You get your little measuring gauge out. And now I'm only just starting to realise I'm in control of myself and I can make myself much better, and I love it. Did you touch the ground? OK, back over. Come back, no, back over, no arguing, back over, come on. Yeah, walk round, back over. Come, walk round. It mustn't touch the ground. Yep, where you go, yep. OK, start here again with it. He don't like criticism when he say, oh, you done that. He'll always argue the toss. No, I never, you know. He put the barrel down in the uh, thing. Oh, I didn't do that, you know. It's, and he's always expected to get away with it, you know, by saying, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not, you know. So I think he find it difficult. If things went against him, um, he, he finds it hard to say, oh, that is wrong. And, you know, so uh, that's, that's one of his failures. But for work rate, he's, he's there, like, you know. I think Peter maybe has some things he would like to prove to himself. He's hoping to put his family on this island with three very young children. It's a big, big undertaking. And I do think you have to question the motivation a little bit. To the end. You're on the same shot, guys. Keep it going. Keep it going. Grandmother Gwen is also in trouble. She's terrified of heights, but determined to make it to the island. I've always had different stages in my life, wife, mother, carer. You know, and sometimes it's the person inside isn't allowed to come out. But, I mean, the time of life now is, it's our time. We've done all our caring and yep. we've brought up the family and they're, they're well on their way, aren't they? Yeah. They're brilliant children and they're adults and they're getting on with their life. So they're all, you have a, it's our time now, isn't it? OK, Gwen struck it up. Let's do something about it. Come on, Gwen, let's go. Yeah, keep it moving. Lend a helping hand. Encourage. Yeah, keep it moving. Come on, then. There we go. No, I won't while all this stuff's here. I've got that heights as it is. And this all I hate you. I've got a lot of time with Gwyneth. She doesn't like heights, obviously. I know it wasn't a great height, you know, to us, but to her it was a mountain. No one helped because all those missiles flying past her, so it was undermining her again, like, you know, but she, she carried on, you know. <laughs> But she carried on and she said, look, I'll be all right. And she fought that fear and she overcome it. And that's very commendable, I think. I 
think that Gwen comes across as a very genuine, nice person. In fact, the type of person that I might go to if I was a bit fed up or I needed a shoulder to cry on. And that kind of person is invaluable on the island. We don't know yet whether she'll be like that at the end of this weekend or whether we'll find this monster growing out of this apparently nice person. That's it, you can do it. Right, you get over and I'll call it the Will you stay there until I'm off, please? Oh, I'm sorry, Danny. Please, with that plank of wood. Just help her over. Gwen's husband, Patrick, is also Don't finding it tough. I think my upbringing was a bit like Castaway 2000. <laughs> uh, spent most of my life in a children's home, like. Uh, so basically, you were. It wasn't that tough, really, as, as you read like it, but it was the 50s. But you were fending for yourself a lot, and you had to look after yourself. Just roll no, over, no, just no, keep no. rolling. Honestly, please, you get down, I'll do it. Just keep rolling. You and just you'll do roll what over. you want to do, and I'll do it. Go on, Gwen, you're doing well. That's it. That's it, love. Yeah, just keep holding the rope tight. That's it, well done. Well done, Gwen. They're a good partner, him and Gwyneth. They've got a lot of tolerance. 19 minutes gone. Right, come on. They would possibly um, be the stability, you know, where other people, like the younger ones maybe, you know, where they're going to go to for advice, like, you know. So he seemed all right. He, he sort of didn't, um, not dynamic, but a good support, you know, and uh, I think um, something firm to lean on. Be a good crutch in a crisis. With a third of the course to go, Rob is on his last legs, as well as Paul's. Like all the recruits, he knows he's now fighting for his place on the island. Here we go. That's it, keep pushing. Okay. 21 minutes. Hold on, hold there on. There you go. Gears going in the chasm. Yeah, the bus clear. Yeah. Bloody Here we go well, in. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, okay. Come on, come on, on. Go back that side, come on, no, the altar no, no. You can't do that. Hey, go on the other side. No. Just no. through. Come out this side. Who's got a soap in there? Keep it coming, come on. Have a shower. Oh, no, the, the yellows finish a minute behind the reds. <laughs> 23 minutes. Come on, Robert. Well done, son. 23 minutes. On the bank. Okay, well done. 24 minutes. Well done, folks. Well done. Well done. Hey. Well done. Good performance. Yes. Well done. Oh, oh, it's excellent. It's absolutely excellent. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's really competitive because the first team has already gone. You don't know what time they've done, but you've got to do it better. So I don't know whether we have, but all the time you're thinking, 17 seconds, 17 minutes, got to do another, got to move quicker. So it's excellent. It's good fun. I could do that again. Oh, jeez. I was fine. I don't like heights. I get claustrophobia. I've got. <laughs> but I couldn't have done it without their help, gee, because I'd have still been stuck up there now. Do you want to just stand up with the game? Come and sit on the bow. Okay, you just winded or out of breath? Just out of breath. Just stand. What is below your navel? In for five. Hold it for five. Force it down. Come on, sit down on that. Sit on that bow, And just let the old bloke go, man. Yeah, you feel all right? Yeah. You all see right. me all right? Yeah. How many hands up? Hey. How many hands have got up? Twelve. It was hard, no, no getting away from it. It's the first time I've ever done anything like that in my life. Oh, my old chest was tight, I can tell you. Now it's the turn of the Greens, and one member, Gordon Carey, turns up with a rather unorthodox style of footwear. You're going to be okay like that, Gordon? Oh, right. You sure? Carey. Okay. Carey. Yeah. Stand by, go! You ready, yeah? You throw the barrels yeah. over. Come on. That's in the chasm. Right, the paddle's okay. all right. Yeah. Watch out! Oh, my Whoa. God. Okay, you've got to be careful now. Come on. He's in the way, you know. I think I can contribute to the pro project as far as um, building is concerned, because that's basically, you know, what I'm employed as. And um, I'm also, because of my farming background, I um, know quite a bit about planting stuff and producing stuff. I've even got allotments of my own here. I've even got chickens in my backyard, actually.
Me. Gordon is actually quite a practical man. He is also quite a patient man. Give me that one. He has a name and that is to take his family back to St Kitts. He sees this opportunity to go to a Scottish island as a great idea because he would be able, he reckons, to get some skills that would be required if he wants to live in a relatively isolated part of St Kitts. Since I came to this country, I've never really settled here. I've always wanted to go back home. I haven't managed it yet, at least not for good. I've been home several times, but not to stay. But I promised myself the next time I go, it'll be for good. Gordon's wife, Cassie, has also decided to wear an improvised outfit. Cassie's clearly trying to get herself around this course in one piece. I got you back five minutes, keep it going. Time's running out. I think she's concentrating on that and maybe not so much on helping to carry things. It's quite a challenge right enough, but she doesn't seem to be particularly active in pulling things across the way some of the others are. She's not going to be fussed, she's not going to be flustered, she's just not going to do what she doesn't want to do. And I can fully see her happily indoors, doing some cooking, doing some baking, and not really that bothered about going outside. I do think that the weather and the cold is something that they really really, really will be challenged by. And I don't know whether they fully recognise how cold it will be. <laughs> the plastic bags seem to be working for Gordon, but the green team are slipping behind on the clock. <laughs> Gordon, look. Oh, my life. It's Gordon. Gordon. Come on, it's too much on the valve. The clock's Go ticking. On. Let's go. Oh, 13 <laughs> minutes. OK, 13 minutes, we're going over... Gordon strikes me as quite a serious person. I think he takes life and his responsibilities to heart. His religious belief has quite an impact on his life. Come on! Come on, Gordon! Come on, Gordon. Come on, Gordon. Come on. They're Seventh-day Adventists, so Saturday is their holy day, which will, of course, mean that they won't be able, if they go, to actually work on the Saturday. And that itself will produce an interesting dimension because the others might not like that very much. OK, now it's no good. Back, back, back. 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 Folks, all back. They touch the floor, all back over the other side. OK, it must have touched the floor. All back, all back. Underneath, leave that just the people. Let's have it under. Gordon, 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 back, back. I'm going back, I'm helping you. Gordon, leave it. You've got to listen to the rules. To me, my beliefs are very important and they're not, it's not something I can compromise on. But having said that, I mean, I'm sure on the island, if I get there, we're going to have lots of tasks for us to do. I could do my task during the week without having to do it on the Saturday, you know, on the Sabbath. Keep that bucket off the floor. Come on, you're falling behind now. 15 minutes. Gordon may not realise that working on Sunday will be a problem as well. The Presbyterian churches that dominate life on the neighbouring islands forbid Sunday working. Mind your makeup, Gordon. Come on. Just lie there. It's easier. No way. No way. Over the Gordon, a strong, hard working lad, like the sense of humour got him through. And he has got a lot of knowledge and he's used to roughing it. So I think he knows what to look out for on the island. I don't think he's going in with his eyes shut. <laughs> the pair of them were so worried about getting their clothes wet, I don't think they had a change of clothing, you know, and, and they thought, I've got to go on like this, and I think that might have um, slowed them down a bit. Just give me anything but your backside. Come on, folks. <laughs> Come on, Cass. Come on, we need... As the green team get to the end of their run, there's a final unwelcome surprise for Gordon and Cassie. Come on, the tries run out. 24 Come on, let's go. I don't want you shouting. Yeah, let's go. Oh, no. Time is wasting! Time is wasting! Get stuck in there! Here we go! Get your water wings off! There we go! You're gonna go back in! Hold on, we're leaving! On the bank! You cannot be serious! On the bank! No, man! On the bank! On the bank! Surely not! OK, 26... They think they've finished, but Lofty's spotted that something's been left behind. Got a problem, Lock. There's still a barrel. Oh, no. So now it's reverse under the bridge, no. over the wall. Oh, no! Barrel. No! It's up to yourselves. No chance. No, no. 
Yes! While Gordon refuses to go back, Toby comes to the fore. Come on, Toby! It's up there! It's up the right! Yes, go over. It's a little rusty. You can see Toby coming up Trump's here because he's trying to cover for team members. And quite nicely, actually, Trevor's now going off with him. He's okay. Trevor, Scouser, you know, uh, they're all comedians. And uh, you need a sense of humour. It lightens the load, you know, when everyone's down. Toby, he really tried. And I've got to take me out after that. He done very well. Yeah, well done, man. Well done. Yeah, check it out. I want to go and see how good I am at forming bonds with people because it's going to be very important to have good relationships with everybody. And uh, I want to see, put that to the test a lot, develop my per personal skills, interpersonal skills. And I believe it certainly will do that. When I come back, I'll be brimming with confidence and a complete social animal. And I think it'll certainly improve me as a person. What else, guys, boy? Well done, mate. So we're talking again. Well done, man. Excellent. Good teamwork. Well done. It's absolutely fantastic. Completely love getting in the dirt and getting head to toe, man. Superb. How did your team done? I think we did really well. Worked together beautifully. Military operation. You sure? Yeah, I'm bloody sure. Yeah. Thought we did great. I think we're a winning team, definitely. I was dreading it because I don't like getting myself muddy. But believe it or not, actually. When I started to do it, and even that muddy thing episode under the bridge there, I actually enjoyed it. I think something is wrong with me. I must be sick. <laughs> Bit more knackered, actually. Once you think it's over, you think it's over, and you spent your energy. There was a bit more, obviously. So, got to get it out of the system. I need a beer. I need a beer tonight. <sighs> My toes is sticking to my skin. I need a shower now. <laughs> Lofty shower may be crude, but it's more powerful than anything that'll be on the island. What else will the castaways miss if they're selected? There isn't anything I would particularly miss. Where do I start? I don't think personally I would miss anything too realistically. Where am I going to get my legs waxed? Cinema. Um, Studies. Where's the library? I miss going to the pub. Where's the supermarket? My mates. Where's the takeaway? Family. Books. Tampax. Salsa dancing. Football matches. A soft flu roll. Hot shower. Clean clothes. The bath. Clean hair. I love my bath. You don't want to end up smelling like an old horse. Civilization. The old glass of Italian wine. Well, Miss Guinness, more than nothing else. My keyboard. My cat. My mum. My parents. Women. A warm bed. My juicing machine. Roast meals. Fresh fruit and veg. Cigarettes. Having hauled the parts to build a raft around the assault course, the teams must now put the pieces together for a race around the lake. This comes from tying all of my, my cows and sheep and goat and back on. Put the cross brace in to keep it all perpendicular so when it flexes, it opposes itself with a sprung tension bar in the middle. One is opposed to the other side, so whatever flex first takes the power out the other side so it stops it rolling. Keep it tight. The captain always goes down with his ship. About to. <laughs> Shut up, Rob. It's not exactly an architectural delight, is it? Rob has been told, don't move. Are you ready? Go! Rafts built, it's time to sink or swim. If I get on, then I'll give it everything I've got. If I don't get on, then whatever I'm doing, I'll give that everything I've got as well. The only thing that's keeping me going is knowing that the island's waiting there, you know, for the whole year, and I can just go and give my best. <laughs> I used to joke about it, saying that was my main reservation. When the time came, after the 12 months, I could be coming home without a husband because he won't want to come home. I know he won't. The thing is, I might feel exactly the same. I haven't heard anything at all, or seen anything, or done anything over the, this weekend at the Scone that has um, made me think, oh, you know, I'm the wrong person for this, or I shouldn't be doing this. In fact, if anything, believe it or not, it's made me more determined to do it. I, I could argue 
all the way down the hill and back again for every reason why I should be on that island. What am I going to get out of it? It will work. It will work a treat. It will be such a success. People in the country, on the mainland are just me gobsmacked. It's going to be absolutely superb. For the record, the yellow team won, and even the red team got round eventually. But at the end of the day, it wasn't the winning that counted with our experts, but how they took part. Now, it's decision time. The intention here is to get a good cross-section of society, to have the, the character mix that you would get in society, all the different characteristics you would get in a, a microcosm of society. And that's why particular people will be chosen. And unfortunately, particular and sometimes very good people with a lot to give will have to be left behind. Two weeks later, the final selections have been made. With just 17 places available on the island, it's a tense time for the 28 hopefuls. If I was a four-year-old, I'd be having a real temper tantrum by now. <laughs> I think that's five minutes fast, Tom. It's down to Cynthia to break the good and the bad news. Might not be them. Might be somebody else completely. Hello? How are you feeling? I knew you'd do all this. Cynthia, yes or no, please. <laughs> How much do you want to go? I want to go more than I want anything else. How much is it worth to you to let me tell you right away? What do you want? What do you want? Anything? Well, you are going. Yes! Oh, this is it. This is it. Hello? Hello, is that Gwyneth? It is. How are you feeling? How do you think? Well, have you got champagne in the fridge? Oh, Cynthia. Is that a yes? Oh. Do you want to put Patrick on for a minute? Can I have a word with him? Yeah. Hello? Hello, so you know you're going? No, she didn't tell me. Could you not tell by her face? Oh, I could, yeah. yeah. I could tell, yeah. Oh, I love you to bits. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Hello, it's Cynthia here. How are you? Fine, how are you? Yeah, fine. You're fine? Yep. You're OK? Yep. Um, I don't want to beat about the bush because I don't think it's fair when you're not, you're actually not going. But I don't want you to think it's, it's a reflection of your performance or anything when you're away. One of the problems we have is that we have a surfeit of, of young men, really. And um, we're trying to get the balance of the community somehow. It's just unfortunate, you know, that there were so so many young men. And, no, and I, I, I sussed that the moment I got there. I know, you could, you could see that. I mean, I've had more applications from, from people at that level. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I wish to, to extend my good wishes and thoughts to all of them, and my thoughts will be with them over the year there. And I'll be as jealous as anything. Paul has not been selected either, nor has Peter and his family. Patricia's hoping to take her two children with her. Oh, my God. Is Patricia there, please? Just pass the phone number to one. Who is it? Just pass the phone number. Yeah, I'll just get it for you. Put it in your poster and just listen Hello? Oh, no, Cynthia. Well, that's not oh, a very no. nice one. <laughs> if you don't go, would you change your life at all? Would you do anything different? Yes, I would slip my wrists. Having that kind of temperament wouldn't do at all. <laughs> Maybe I should put you out of your misery and tell you that you are going. You're joking? No, you're going to the island. You and Jodine and Michael are going. Oh my God, Cindy, I don't say. Mud lovers Gordon and Cassie and their two children also get to go. So madly keen to go. Yeah, madly keen to go, but I think the butterflies are slightly taken over. Well, I suppose I'd better tell you. Mm hmm yeah, that's nice, sweet. You sound very low-key about it after all these well, nerves. Yeah, I am, because I've got Toby next to me. And because uh, we've got together as a team. But once Toby's had a little chat, then then if everything goes right, then yeah, there'll be a lot of emotion. OK, well, do you want to put Toby on then? Yeah, I'm just going to move out the way and then Toby can get onto the, onto the other end of the phone. <laughs> Hello. Hi there. Um, I don't like going second, but uh, good, not bad. Yes, well, maybe I 
Did you get it? Yeah. Hey, nice song. My God. Oh. Uh, I, 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 I'm just going to hug my sister, OK? <laughs> In Ireland, Porig also gets the green light. I'm, I'm just going to hug my flatmate, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Cynthia. Oh, God, you, you don't... Uh, you, oh, well, I, I imagine you can pro probably get so happy you've made me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, Grant. Oh, darling boy. <laughs> The castaways have now been chosen. Castaway 2000. Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow night, the two sets of castaways meet for the first time. The first group have already formed close bonds, but it's a real culture shock for the second, especially when an argument erupts over the relationship with the television production team. Uh, those people who felt that they'd like to meet without Lion, show their hands. I've walked out because I'm really, really angry and upset. The simple fact is I think some people have lost the plot. Have they lost what initially they set out they wanted to go into this for? Because that's what it sounded like to me. They're behaving like a bunch of spoiled brats. Did you get all your possessions for oh. one year in here? Right. <laughs> it's been a lousy weekend. Um, I didn't quite enjoy the food. Oh, God, what are we letting ourselves in for? What am I letting myself in for? Um, it's been one heck of a shock meeting up with the other group. It's a good eclectic mix of um, all sorts of folk, healers, bickerers. I think we're going to get on well. There are a couple of people who probably will rub each other up the wrong way. And some of the people that are going, um, I really like. Um, one of them I love. Um, and some of them I don't like. Ben stood up and let it be known to his group that there was too much bickering going on. Very quickly, people started to stab people in the back. And I still feel, even now, on Sunday, that I'm pulling knives out of my back. Ron is talking about not coming to the island. He's called a taxi, he's about to go, and I'm working really hard to try and stop him. Finished. Absolutely finished. No more on camera, no more nothing. <laughs> Let's take care. Bye, Gwen. Yeah. With just seven weeks to go before they're due to leave their old lives behind and start new ones as castaways, tension is already building. Yes. Nice lunch. Find out tomorrow night whether the carefully chosen community falls apart before it has even begun as the first castaways head for Tarrancay to start their year on the island. I'm very sad that Ron has decided he's not going to go. I think he did the right thing for him. <laughs> and I can understand how much he'd had enough. I'm pretty close there too.